This is the handle of one of the most deadly weapons in the world. The blade is made from some 30,000 layers of steel. This is the legendary Samurai Sword. In this smithy, they still make the swords in the same tradition that has been used for centuries. An apprentice pieces together fragments of a rare metal called jewel steel, known in Japan as Tamahagane. He wraps about two kilos of the steel in paper to hold it together, coats the parcel in ash, and then spoons over some muddy water, which will help draw out impurities when the steel goes into the furnace. The furnace is red hot, almost a thousand degrees Celsius. Despite the intense heat, the steel still needs to be heated for 15 minutes before it's even slightly softened. Then they batter it with a sledgehammer to fuse the pieces together. They coat it with ash again and reheat it in the furnace so that it can take another battering. They repeat this process for half an hour until the fragments become one lump of pure steel. They need to fold the steel in half, and to do this use a hammer and chisel combined with brute force. The steel is given another splash of muddy water and heads back to the furnace before being folded again. As they fold the steel, the layers increase rapidly. After three folds, there'll be eight layers, after five, thirty-two, and after up to fifteen folds, incredibly, there could be over thirty thousand. The last folds have to be flattened with a mechanical hammer. The apprentice's work is complete, and it's time for the master to craft the blade. With so many layers of pure steel, it's incredibly strong, and it takes him days to knock it into shape. After the master has finished shaping the steel, it's painted with clay. This isn't just to give it an ornate pattern. When it goes back in the furnace, the clay will cause different temperatures to build up on parts of the blade. This will make some parts softer and more flexible. It has to be heated to exactly the right temperature and for the right amount of time. Too short a time and the exposed steel wouldn't get hot enough, but if it's heated for too long, then the painted area would reach the same temperature as the rest of the blade. That's why the room's so dark. They can tell how hot the sword is by the color it glows. The master checks the blade again, and then he begins to sharpen it. He scrapes it on soft stones which are lubricated with water, creating an incredibly fine point which could cut through armor. Thankfully, it's more likely to end up at a collector's piece. Finally, it's given an ornate handle. After three weeks of sweat and toil, there is a single sword, both beautiful and deadly.